Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and before we get into today's video well I'm just going to remind you the three books that are on sale drink tea and read the paper if you're a green belt and a black belt and you want simple instruction on how to apply your skill design of experiments for 21st century engineers and finally a statistical process control for small batch production. They are all available from lulu.com and the links are in the video below. Welcome to the latest video and in this video newsletter what we're going to take a look at is we're going to take a look at some basic manufacturing problem solving. So and it is basic um, having said that this could be your um, AD problem solving, it could be your A3 basic manufacturing or it could be your Six Sigma project. What I'm about to show you fits in all of those different scenarios because what we are looking at is the basic physics of your process. So if you are do, doing basic manufacturing problem solving, here's where you start. So, point one, what is it you're trying to fix? What's the state of your, of your process? Is it chaos? Or is it control? Now I'm going to say this in a number of different ways for you. So we're just going to break this down. We're going to we're going to use different phrases, and then I'm going to make a point with some diagrams. What I what I mean by this phrase. So is it chaos or is it control? Okay. Another way of saying this is: Are you trying to work on the signal? Are you trying to work on the noise? So if you've got a high defect rate, is the problem chaos? Is it noise? Is it control? Is it signal? Okay, so got to understand what's going on. So is it chaos or control? Is it noise or signal? What's another way to look at this? Is it standard deviation? Or is it mean? Is it the spread of the results or the center of the results? Okay, so what's another way to say this? SPC terms, is it common cause? Is it special cause? Have I got any other ways of saying this? Chaos control, signal or noise, standard deviation or mean? common or special cause. Um, I suppose in, in everyday language are we off center? Yeah, are we off center or is there too much variability? Okay, so there's a number of ways to say it, trying to kind of get you tuned into this, folks. The, 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 the basic principle. Now, this is basic physics, okay? What's the current state of the physics of your process? Now, what we're going to do now is in order to answer that question, we're going to get the diagrams out. So, simple, seven quality tools, effectively. What are the diagrams going to tell you in order to decide whether you're in chaos or control? Well, let's start with the simplest. Yeah, so for me, this is the most powerful chart, cannot be beaten, and is always needed. The run chart. So you get the run chart out. What does chaos look like? Well, chaos looks like this. The process swings about wildly from maximums to minimums. You've got rejects out the top, you've got rejects out the bottom, and it just dances around. That's chaos. What does control look like? Well, this would be a situation where got the same specifications, and you're up 
up here and you're off centre, what you want to do is drop that thing back there. So that's what, how the run chart tells you whether you've got chaos or control. The next one is it could show up on the histogram. So of course what would the histogram look like? Well, could be nice and normal like this. But what you've effectively got of course is just too much spread. Or could be nice and normal like this. It's just sitting off target. Now there is another version of this. This is actually in SBC terms. This actually is a processing control. But what we're trying to do is, is reduce the variability. We, we're trying to deal with this. So I'm sort of calling uh, an out of control process, a chaotic process is when you've got too much variability. This actually is a processing control really. It's just not capable. Now, what you tend to find more though is when the process is a bit chaotic, you tend to get this type of thing in your histogram. So there's, there's no sort of shape to it. There is no normality. The process dances around so much that, that it's just a chaotic result. You have no idea what's coming next. So it could show up on your histogram like that. So if you want to use a histogram, you can do. If you want to use the run chart, you can do. What else? Well, you could look at it as a CPK diagram, of course. And this is going to look like this. So again, it's going to show you defects out in both tails at the same time. We are hitting the target perfectly. So the middle of everything is dead on center. It's dead where we want to be. We're not off center. We've just got too much variability. What would that look like if the process was in control? Well, you have your are you in control or are you go, have you got chaos? The capability diagram would look like that. It'd be sitting off center. So you can see it on a run chart. You can see it on a histogram. You can see it on a CPK diagram. So the basic quality tools, the seven quality tools, just help you with this. That's why these things work. They are brilliant at basic manufacturing problem solving. Now, if I'm gonna solve chaos, which tool am I gonna get out of the box? Well, in order to solve chaos, it is multi-causal. So just to say something here, if you've got 10 variables, all with a little bit of variability, and so you've got 10 factors, a little bit of variability in the incoming raw material, a little bit of variability in controlling the temperature and the speed and the, uh, the maintenance and the uh, filter cleanliness on your machine and there's a tiny little bit of variability in 10 different variables what happens that 10 times variability all adds together to create this situation where you've got too much of this there is no root cause here if you want to compress that you're gonna have to attack probably you're gonna have to attack 50% of your variables here as a minimum, possibly more. It is multi-causal. Therefore, the tools I use, process flow, cause and effect. So you can see the seven quality tools building run chart, histogram, CPK, process flow, cause and effect. Okay, what else? What else am I gonna do here? Now, once I've found the variables and I attack them, I'm going to attack them with the five great control systems. So we are gonna get the variables under control. So what are my weapons of choice? Well, I can improve my standard operating procedure. I can implement SLP. I can make sure that ISO 9000 
is auditing these great standards I can use mistake proof devices and again the ISO 9000 should audit them I can use TPM uh, to get the machinery uh, under control um, and is there one more or oh, of course there is I said five but there's actually six of course 5s visual management the six great control tools so, so what we've got have. is we have multi-causal problem too much noise we're here it's going to be the case that 50% at least of the variables are going to be attacked we're going to identify them with the cause and effect diagram and then we're going to fire the world-class control techniques at them and we're going to lock the variables down and we are going to squeeze that shape in probably what will happen is if you had a wild histogram it's definitely going to start to turn normal as well at the same time but this is multi-causal all of this variability 10 little variables all adding together 15 little variables all adding together you can get rid of two of them if you want but it won't solve the problem you've got to go after all the variables in that situation now over here of course this is a completely different thing now we have over here potentially we have root cause over here potentially because in order to bump this thing off center usually one big variable has been adjusted something's gone wrong here now if you've got great controls it is something that's going to go wrong so how do you solve this it's dead easy it's a process audit in other words you audit your control plan and you should have a list of all these variables of the inputs to the process inputs by the way not we're not we're not measuring outputs here when we get process control so you should have come up with fantastic process inputs by the way I should have said that's what this thing is going to do it's going to identify all my inputs and their current state of control so we're going to look at all the controls we have all the rules we have for the inputs to the process we'll do an audit we'll find the one that's wrong and we'll put it back now if you don't have rules and all you're basically doing is relying on the skill of an engineer to go and swing on a dial uh, to fix this thing whilst that might fix it and it fixes it very quickly if you've got no rules this thing's going to come back because you're not following any rules every day so you've got to have a control plan that controls your controls your inputs now the difference between these two of course is that this technique over here potentially is going to take three hours this technique on the other hand is going to take three months because getting 10 15 20 variables all under control it's much harder to do than just shifting one setting or putting one uh, input back to its standard so this is going to be a single variable this is going to be multi-causal this takes three months this takes three hours maybe three days if something's broke and you have to take it out and repair it this can usually be done by one person this one over here takes a team it often involves purchasing they like to buy the crappiest material they can blow up variability all to craziness so it, it involves multi multi departments you know the maintenance people they're probably cutting corners on the maintenance the purchasing people are cutting corners the manufacturing people don't want to train anybody all of those variables all start uh, adding together and the whole process goes crazy um, 
that ain't gonna be a five minute job to fix. It's gonna take three mo months, it's gonna take a team, it's gonna be a project, you better get on with it. Um, but you can see, look, what have I mentioned here? What tools have I mentioned? There's nothing here that's outside of the seven quality tools. And the, there's a reason for that. The seven quality tools attack the physics of your process. And as far as I know, the physics of your process has not changed in the last 70 years. Are you dealing with chaos or are you dealing with control? That simply has not changed from the day that Walter Schuett invented statistical process control. And that's what you've got to do. You've got to look. Are we dealing with common cause or special cause? Are we dealing with too much variability or are we off center? If we don't know that, and my God, why wouldn't you know it? It's a simple diagram that tells you, if you don't know that and understand it, all the efforts in the world won't fix the problem. And this can be your A3, as I've already said. What do you need to do? Understand the physics. This can be your AD. What do you need to do? Understand the physics. This can be your Six Sigma project. What do you need to do? Understand the physics. Doesn't matter which, which methodology you're gonna use. Maybe you could even go plan, do, check, act if you wanted to. Let's throw that on the table. And that's another one people like to use. The situation is the same. You've got to understand the physics of the problem. The physics of the problem come from the diagrams once you understand the physics of the problem, you can understand how to remove variability or how to shift the target, hit the target or reduce the variability. Are you in chaos or are you in control? And if you master these techniques, and they're dead simple to master, man alive, you can go anywhere and solve any problem. You really can. You will be yeah, a problem solving expert, walk into any company and do it. And for the company that you work for, guess what you're gonna do? you are going to make more money.